All right, I'm back. I'm ready to do the next part of the demonstration. I would like to be able to show more of the ocean color that I was looking for. So my first step is going to be um, painting in uh, more of a blue. So I'm going to practice on my paper here. I always have a little scratch paper nearby. And I'm going to bring in this beautiful blue and kind of go on top of that. Now, one thing you need to know about painting, among many other things that I teach you, is that you kind of pick a color that dominates. Now, usually the if you're painting an ocean scene, your sky and your ocean are gonna have similar blues in them or reds or yellows or greens or whatever it is. If you have a sunset, you're going to see all of those colors in the ocean. If you have um, a storm coming in and you are painting in all of the colors that you see in the ocean, you're going to see, um, you know, those same colors painted into the sky as the ocean because it's going to reflect. That sky is going to dominate, you know, kind of how the entire painting looks. Uh, right now, I'm covering up some of the paint that I had put on earlier with this blue so that I can get a more consistent color and then I'll be able to actually work on making the colors that I want. This I guess you could say is going to be more like an underpainting. So an underpainting serves as a really great way to get color onto the paper and get information on there. I should say canvas as well. Most people paint on canvases, I'm using paper. Why do I use paper? Well, it's more economical for students. And as a teacher, I try to use a variety of materials. You can paint on really just about any surface with acrylic paint, but um, we're using just regular paper as we are making a carousel book. So the idea is that I, my light source, I'm going to move here. The idea is, is that your, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> I got distracted by my light. Now I don't know what I was saying. Anyways. All right. So this is a base coat just to kind of get some information on there. If you ever let your paint dry and you weren't done painting, that's where you end up in a situation where, oh, now I gotta repaint the entire thing to make it more consistent. So I can still see that white where in where I stopped painting on there. It's not a big deal. You know, some artists would hide that from their videos. Like, oh, I don't want anybody to know I made that mistake, but I guess it's important to know, you know, if you make mistakes on your paper, you're going to be able to cover it up. We're layering paint anyway. So now I'm going to need to let that dry a little bit. And right now it looks like the, it looks like Antarctica, which is not what we're painting today. So it needs to be a lot more subtle. And my inspiration is definitely a lot lighter, but I needed to cover up a lot of, a lot of that color so that I could see what I'm actually working with. So what I want you to be able to understand is that, you know, I did make a little bit of a mistake on here and I'm just trying to correct that with going over it and being more consistent with my color before I do the actual painting. So now I'm probably going to let that dry because as you can see, anytime I make a mark on there, it is going to, you know, it's going to kind of leave, leave it, that mark in that place because I have that white underneath. All right, so again, this I'm not painting Antarctica, but it sure looks like it in this painting. So 
Um, I'm going to give that a minute to dry and then I'll come back. 